Chapter 79 After crying with Grazé in her arms, Ashley felt better. Crying really did heal, at least with someone that cares. Lost tears had found and coupled with the right thoughts, allowing her to release the hurt, healing. Grasse made that happen. Her thoughts worked clear around him. Her feelings felt valued and loved. Bad things had happened to her, which had hurt and made her doubt herself. But she was on the journey of restoring belief in herself. She pulled back his ears, stretching his face, making him look silly. You're such a wonderful dog. She kissed him on the nose. He whined and looked up at the ceiling. What's wrong, sweetie? I just gave you a compliment. He kept his green eyes focused on the ceiling. She followed where they rested. Above them, a panel was loose. A corner of it rose slightly from the frame supporting it. She stood on the bed and tried reaching it, but couldn't. Nothing was up there anyways, just the guts of the hospital, air conditioning, tubes, wires, insulation, would be beyond the ceiling panels. Grazé kept staring, though, like his eyes wanted to burn a hole through the panel. She considered bringing a chair onto the bed to stand on it, but she would surely break her legs in a terrible fall. Little Grazé wouldn't like that. He thought her life was meaningful and valuable. That was enough for her. She loved him. She wouldn't allow him to suffer on her account. With Grazé, she had come to realize she almost made a terrible mistake. Killing herself would have put everyone through more grief. She would have truly hurt them. Jeff probably would have blamed himself. Tina would have lost a friend, and Donald may have felt bad for not being stronger for her. These people and Grazé cared about her, and because she cared for them, she also had to care for herself. She was worth something. She was lovable, and she did have some goodness inside herself. She wouldn't endanger herself. But that loose panel bugged her. What had made it so? These hospital rooms were so uniform that this difference stood out sharply. Had someone else been held prisoner here and tried escaping through the ceiling? Is the ceiling the way out? It seemed wrong to go up to leave, but maybe they needed to try something different. Jeff had already tried going down. Maybe up was better to reach a way of getting down. She went to the bathroom <clears throat> and found a plunger beside the toilet bowl. She took it, stood up on the bed, and jabbed at the loose panel above, sending clouds of white dust floating down. She coughed. Then she held her breath. Who knew what particles were contained in these ceiling panels? The cancer-causing asbestos might be in them. This place didn't seem like a modern building. It could have been built long ago, before people knew of such dangers. Not wanting Grazé to breathe the dust, she told him to get down. Instead, he raised himself on his hind legs and sniffed the air. She gave him a little shove with her left foot. It was enough to cause him to tilt and fall off the bed. He looked up at her accusingly, but he was safely away from most of the dust and 
the panel if it fell. She jabbed at it again and again, stirring up more particles, driving her into coughing spasms, but succeeding in making the panel fall onto the mattress. A large square of darkness gaped above, leading into the unknown. If she explored it, how would Grazé follow? He would have to stay in the room, who would protect her. But she wouldn't be gone long. In fact, she would just be above him, only to take a peek and then report back to the others. She really wanted to give them good news for once. They deserved an encouraging turn of events. Perhaps it wouldn't be too dangerous if she placed the chair squarely on the bed and climbed it to reach the ceiling. She did just that, but found she lacked the strength to pull herself up into the hole. She lifted the computer that was beside the bed and placed it on the chair so she could use it as another step. Grazé whined. She kissed him. Everything is going to be fine, sweetie. Then she climbed the chair and took the next step onto the computer. This sent wobbles down the computer, through the chair, and onto the bed, shaking the mattress, which in turn shook the chair, computer, and herself more, a vicious cycle that if continued would lead to her fall. Holding her breath, she took her remaining foot off the chair and placed it onto the computer with her other foot. Grazé woofed. The structure wobbled dangerously. She didn't look down. Without a doubt, she would fall if she saw how high she was. Ashley wasn't exactly comfortable with heights. They always seemed to make her dizzy and faint. Instead, she looked up and grabbed the edge of the frame that had held the panel in place. This steadied the wobbles. It also allowed her to see deeper in the hole. Rungs creating an embedded ladder ran straight up along a cement pipe structure. There was no other direction to go. With the dust cleared now, the light from the room dimly illuminated about ten feet up the tube. Maybe this passage led to the roof. From there, they might climb down a fire escape or find a door that led to an outside service elevator. They could bypass any staff on the first floor if they could get down from the outside. Jeff would be pleased about this. Nothing could dispel his grief over Laura's death. But good news was something. She grabbed the first ladder rung. It was cold metal. She tried pulling herself up, but was only able to move a few inches before sagging back down. How was she going to get up there? Although athletic, she was never really good at pull-ups. Her arms were skinny and weak. Grosset woofed again. She ignored him, curling one leg up to her chest, then the other. She was able to get one foot onto the slight ledge of the frame and use that leverage to get her other foot up, now pulling with her arms and legs, succeeding to get her body into the frame. There she felt comfortable enough to look down. Grazé was sitting on the bed staring up with big green eyes through his white hair. Woof. I'm okay, silly. There's a ladder here. Woof. I'll be fine. She looked into the darkness. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea after all. She had no flashlight. Looking down again, she realized she was going to have a tough time getting her feet squarely back onto the computer on the wobbly chair. Her stomach felt full of moths, tickling her insides, making her feel like she were falling. Her toes curled around the wooden frame. Her grip tightened onto the metal rung, warming it. 
Suddenly, she didn't want to be up here. She wanted secure ground. This would have been so better if she had done this with the others, but now it was too late. Woof, woof. She didn't dare look down again. Instead, she focused on the side of the cement tube and pushed herself against its cold surface, trying to find comfort there, but failing miserably, too aware of the emptiness underneath. Her fear flowed from more than just her current position. Her whole life being unstable contributed to the feeling. Just four hours ago, she discovered she was in a dream. Now she was trapped in an unwanted reality, an immoral research facility, having been sexually assaulted, Laura and Charlie dead, almost having killed herself. Her sense of security pulled out from under her. She needed grounding. Tremors shook through her, threatening a fall. She tried st stiffening, but couldn't help the tremors. Woof! Grazé couldn't help. She knew that before she climbed into this miserable hole. Why did she climb up here again? A roof. But that seemed like an unreasonable plan now. Her grip was weakening by the second, probably because she was holding on so tightly, draining her energy. This would result in plummeting onto the back of the wooden chair and breaking her spine in two. She couldn't help tightening her fingers more, though this made her hands numb from the intense strain. And because they were numb, she tried even harder to hold on, unable to feel how strongly they gripped the metal rung. She heard noise below and looked down. Grazé had somehow made it onto the computer and placed his front paws on the chair's back, lifting one paw and reaching for her in the air, whining. Sorry, sweetie, I'm stuck. I should have listened to you before. She laughed nervously. I'm just going to explore a little, and I'll be right back. I might as well, since I'm already up here. I'm sure my jitters will pass after I get going. I just have to keep moving. Don't worry about me. She realized she was trying to talk herself into it. She was trying to distract herself from overwhelming panic, taking control with positive thinking. The strange thing was that it was actually working. She took her first step up the rungs, and it was okay. They were sturdy enough, and despite nothing below her, she had the rungs as her support. That was something, at least. She took another step, and another. But she was going into the dark. A cool mildew smell surrounded her. She could barely make out a few feet in front of her. Soon, she wouldn't be able to see at all. Then she might stumble into a skeletal man who tried escaping years ago, but instead died in this passage. From somewhere nearby, she heard a bone-chilling, muffled scream of a man.